from Pierce Gift It's the Tom Likas Show. Shut your goddamn mouth. I'm trying to listen to Tom Likas. Bitch! And now, and now, here he is. Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues for you. Really care about it. It's never con radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 The Tom Liga Show. Brought to you in part by HR Block. You got people. For an office near you, call 1-800-HR-BLOCK or visit hrblock.com. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. This is a safe place. It's a place where we can feel free sharing our feelings. Think of my office as a nest in a tree of trust and understanding. It's okay, honey. That's why we came. I, I guess I, deep down, I'm, I'm feeling a little confused. I mean, suddenly you get married and you're supposed to be this entirely different guy. I don't, I don't, I don't feel different. I, I mean, take, take yesterday, for example. We were, we were out at the Olive Garden, which was lovely. And uh, I had to look over at a certain point during the meal and see a, a waitress taking an order. And, uh, and I found myself wondering uh, what color her underpants might be her panties odds are they're probably basic white cotton but i i started thinking well maybe they're maybe they're silk panties maybe it's a thong maybe it's something really cool that i don't even know about you know and uh i guess what i'm trying to say is that that now that i'm married I, i'm definitely feeling a little freaked out about the fact that i'm gonna have sex with only one person for the rest of my life i i started feeling what? What? I thought we were in the trust tree with, in the nest, are we not? It's Like Is 101. The ongoing on air adult education course teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Like Is 101. And. You must know, in case your plan was to call in here about this, I'm not a marriage counselor, a couples counselor, or a therapist. I am not here to help you improve your marriage or your relationship. That is not my job. I don't teach that class. By the way, is that Dean yelling in the other room as I'm lecturing here? Okay. Is he uh, doing the energy drinks again tonight? What's to do? Every day. Every day now? Okay. Can we talk to Aaron over there at the deli? And can we say, you know what, take those energy drinks and just put something, put some Gatorade in there, seal that back up, tell them it's an energy drink? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Dean asked if he could smoke weed. You know what, if that will calm you down, dude, just do it. Don't even ask. Just don't tell me you did it because it would be illegal. But you do whatever it takes to calm down. Just do that. All right. Anyway, I am not a marriage counselor. I'm not a marriage therapist or a couples counselor. I'm not here to help you fix your marriage or fix your relationship. I'm opposed to marriage. I'm opposed to men being in committed relationships. I'm opposed to women living in your house, guys. So I'm not here to help you fix that. I say, if that's your problem, call that bald schmuck Dr. Phil. Call him. Do not call here, okay? Because I am not here to help you with that. And I really honestly think if you are married, get divorced. Just do it. Just get out. I did it. You can do it. All right? 
Seriously, my job is to make sure that you don't waste time, money, or energy on women who are not going to give you what you want. I can't make it any simpler than that. The biggest problem I see in guys is that they waste time, money, and energy spinning their wheels with chicks who are attention whores who have no intention of giving us what we want within a reasonable period of time. So don't do it. And I am here to help you not do it. Uh, the bottom line here is if you have a date planned for this weekend, if it is not for the specific purpose of getting laid, now is the time to call and cancel. Cancel that date right now. Cancel it. The purpose of going on a date is to get sex. If you're not getting intercourse, and I mean, you know, missionary style, the basic, uh, you know, I don't mean having access to earlobes or lips or, you know, service entrances. You know what I'm talking about here. If you're not having good old-fashioned humping and pumping, uh, you should not be going on that date this weekend. She will take your money. She will soak up your attention like a biscuit sops up gravy. And while you're wasting your time with that chick, there'll be all the other chicks you could have been getting who you will not be getting because you'll be stuck. You'll be locked in with this chick. You must remember, think about it this way. You may not be able to see it. Maybe you're too young to understand. There's a limited number of Friday and Saturday nights in your life. There's a total of 104 Fridays and Saturdays for every year you're alive. So 52 Fridays and 52 Saturdays for every year. Total of 104 days a year. That's it. Everyone you waste talking about the latest movie that came out, everyone you waste spending $150 on concert tickets, taking some broad to a movie you doesn't put out, every night you waste sitting having coffee at Starbucks is a night you could have been plowing somebody else. You know, I got married at 18 like an idiot. And I must tell you, I'm a numbers guy. I went back and I looked and I wondered, how many nights did I waste that I could have been going out and plowing somebody? And I have spent the rest of my life trying to make up for all those Fridays and Saturdays when I was 18 and 19 and 20, when I should have been doing three chicks a night. And instead, I was locked in with one. What was I thinking? Some of you guys aren't at least, look, I'll tell you what, when I was married at 18, at least I was getting laid. There's a lot of you guys who waste time on chicks. You don't even know if you'll ever get laid. You're wasting time and money and energy spinning your wheels. It is time for them to put up or shut up. By the way, what chick can shut up? Seriously. Any chick who you think is unlikely to put out in the near future, it's time to cut them off. Cut them off of the past. Cut off their oxygen. Women demand attention. You have to cut them off the past. Do not give them attention. Do not. Don't compliment women. Don't tell them they look good. You're giving away your power. You're giving it away. Are you kidding me? Yeah, every time you tell a chick she looks good, she's thinking to herself, that's great. You know, if this guy thinks I look good, I can do even better than him. You don't want to build up a woman's self-esteem. You want to tear it down. Your job is to tear down her self-esteem so she feels so low, she'll even have sex with you. That's how low she's sunk. She actually would consider taking her clothes off in front of you. That's the way you want it. That's the way it's got to be. Let's get that going. Time now to start separating the wheat from the chaff. It's time now to figure out who's putting out and who's just sopping up your concert tickets, sopping up your coffee, sopping up your time, sopping up those meals you've been buying. 
sopping up your attention. It's time to stop these chicks from being big, fat biscuits that want to sop up all your gravy. Stop it. There's only one gravy a girl ought to be sopping up from you. You know what I'm talking about? Seriously. Any woman who's going to get salad from me is going to know what kind of salad dressing is on that salad. I'll tell you what. I'm shaking up a batch right now. If you're going to eat salad, girls, you're going to have to add your own spices. Seriously. Guys, that is my job as your professor, to keep you focused to keep you focused on the idea that you don't want to waste your money and time. You don't want to be giving attention. You don't want to be raising anybody's self-esteem. You want to lower a woman's self-esteem so she feels lower than a snake's belly. You want you want a woman to feel, oh, my God, I'm lucky to have anybody talking to me. That is what you want. Period. All you guys with the flowers and the cards and the notes and the thoughts and the champagne and the renting limousines and candy and concert tickets. Oh, honey, I know. I know how much you wanted to see Air Supply. They're coming back. Oh, honey. Oh, <laughs> uh, stop it. Stop it. You should be getting sex and sex should be free. And that is that. It's that simple. Now, if you've got questions for your professor, as I help you avoid relationships, avoid commitment, and especially avoid marriage, you call me here at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And if you're one of the people who disagrees with the professor, if you're a woman who is angered by what you're hearing in this classroom, maybe you're a new student, you can call us here as well, 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. And we are now accepting transfer students from other countries. If you are in another country, you can call our international number, 323-520-6211. That's from anywhere on planet Earth. The country code is 1, because we're number 1. Just ask the president. He'll tell you. It's fine. Country code in uh, in England is 44. That should tell you something. Okay, So you dial the country code 1, and then area code is 323, and then the number is 520-6211 from anywhere on the planet. 323-520-6211. It's like it's what a water. We are worldwide, baby. Tom, 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 Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. My ex called me the other day. She was saying, oh, I'm having problems. I need to talk. It's been two years. She has two guys who she doesn't know who the, her baby father could be. And that would have been me, too, if it wasn't for Likas 101. It's Likas 101 on the Tom Likas Show. It's Mike is 101. I'm your professor. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Thank you for tuning in. Jessica. On Mike is 101. Hello. Hey, how are you? Great. Um, I disagree with you on one point. And I, I'm going to start out by saying I'm not calling to bash you whatsoever. I listen to your show every single day, and I agree with most everything you say. Um, but the one thing is that I, I just always disagree with the fact that I think that you should compliment women. No, that's that's, tra way. that's traditional thinking. Uh, and complimenting women is the quickest way to be going to dinner with them uh, every Friday night for the next 10 years without getting any sex. No, see, I disagree. I think that complimenting a woman, no, praising a woman is the quickest way. Have you dated to, a woman? Let her, I'm sorry? Have you ever dated a woman? I dated a woman for three years, actually, yes. Uh-huh. All right. So maybe lesbians um, are different. I don't know. But I can tell you, know you Jessica. I'm not a lesbian. I'm bisexual. I've dated men and I've dated women. But I'm going to tell you right now, I think that the quickest way to get into a girl's panties is to call her sexy. And but it her. doesn't work for guys. If you're a jerk, but you call her sexy, I promise you, it's, she's going to look for your approval because you're a jerk. And you're going to call her sexy. When you call her sexy, 
That's how she knows that she's going to get your approval. So she'll sleep with you to get your approval. It's, uh, you know what? Putting women on ice, treating them like crap, has always worked for me. It is, it is bulletproof. The number of women I have ignored, I have put on hold, the number of women I said I would be there on a given night and then didn't show up, who then come back time and time again for more, it, it's proof positive. So you tell them, you don't compliment them. So if no. they ask you, how do I look? Do you say bad? I mean, do you give a negative response? No, I'll say, oh, great. But I'll never volunteer a compliment. Never. Now, what if she just hasn't heard it and she's willing to hear it and she says, Too much well, work. TMW, too much work. That is high maintenance. I mean, okay. When, when you hear a woman say something like, you know what, Tom, you never compliment me. Do you think I'm sexy? Are you attracted to me? I mean, do you say... Again, oh, well, if we've, well, put it this way. If we've gotten to the point where she's saying, I never compliment her, that means we've already had sex. And that means once she starts getting like that, starts becoming high maintenance, I, I chop them off at the knees. I'm done. Now, if you thought the stipulation was, you have to call her sexy. She has to think that you think she's sexy or she's not sleeping with you. And if she does, if she no. does think you're sexy, she will sleep with you. Too much work. Because there's more than enough women who, when I treat them like crap, will give me exactly what I want. Isn't that a lot of work? Isn't it a lot no. of work putting extra effort in? But treating people like crap work? is very easy because there's no effort required. I mean, how about just ignoring people and not calling them for a few weeks? How well, much, anything, how much work is that? Is What's that? If anything, I would think that if somebody didn't call me for a few weeks, I would think they're disinterested. But that think... very, the very thing that makes you think they're disinterested makes many women think, oh, my God, I thought you weren't interested. And then they get very excited when you call them after three or four weeks. Well, now, if a guy told me, if a guy was just a jerk all the time, he never really had time for me and the whole bit. I mean, I think I'd go out of my way to, to, to get the attention. You know what I mean? But if he's a jerk and then he goes, God, you're, you're sexy. I mean, I can't wait to take your clothes off. Oh, but again, By you're way, talking about I'm Jessica. I'm available for you this weekend. You know what I mean? He blows me off. He's still the jerk. But then he throws in that, damn, I want to sleep with you. No, you it's see, like, that's like that, that that might be I you. Mean, I think that would work quicker. That might be you. But I'm telling you what really works is not complimenting women, telling them, hey, we'll get together this weekend, then not calling them for three weeks, then calling back and saying, oh, my God, I've been so busy. And then they're like, they, they've already assumed they've been blown off. And now it's like, well, he is interested. I think in that sense, you are now, with that behavior, attracting girls, attracting desperate women with low self-esteem. Yes. Instead of a sexy girl that wants to prance around in lingerie for you. I don't, I, I don't need the lingerie. Around. I don't need, I don't, I don't need somebody prancing around. I just need them to put the left leg at the two and the right leg at the ten. I mean, you never have to call them again after you tell them. You tell them they're sexy, you sleep with them, you never have to call them again. But I do. But I don't, but the thing is, I get plenty of sex without ever telling a woman she's sexy. Well, I mean, good luck with that. I'm and, and by the way, the main reason for that is because women think that men will change. They think they're going to change us. They give us the benefit of the doubt. They let us get away with murder thinking they'll change us. That is why women hook up with drug addicts and drunks and, and abusers. And, and, and it's just that motherly instinct that makes you want it. I don't care what the reason is. I, well, whatever the reason, that's how it works. Now, it may not work on you. I, I grant you, you might be different. But generally speaking, attractive women are desperate for approval. And when you don't give it to them, they work even harder to get it. Mediocre women are desperate for approval. No, darling. Girls no, that, no. It's the exact. No, you're wrong. Beautiful. You're wrong. Uh, darling, again, now my experience is with women only. Lots of them. Going back to when I was a teenager, okay? And I'm telling you... Uh, that desperate women are frequently the most attractive women out there. They are also frequently the loneliest women. And they have the lowest self-esteem because they're very hard on themselves. They are very... Uh, I, I was with a woman one time, literally, if her weight was not exactly 108 pounds, she, she'd she be done for the day, crying and flipped out. Th that's, like, perfect. <laughs> I 
I mean, I think that a 10, I, I mean, a true 10, a true 10. Now, stop with a true 10, because a 10 is anyone okay, who has, right. who physically has no flaws. That's a 10. Right. And, well, and well, having well, self-esteem well, does not make her a true 10. A 10 is someone who truly well, has no flaws. Okay, somebody who's, what I'm saying is there's, there's, Mediocre, that's close to perfection, and then there's damn near perfect. Now, if if you're close to perfection, it's and it, it's darling, you're 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 you're, 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 don't, you're you're blowing smoke out your ass now because you I, I mean you're really in over your head. I have dated hundreds, if not thousands, of women. I have quite a sample size here, and I'm telling you that the hotter a woman is the more insecure she is about the way she looks. If you don't believe me, turn on any of these daytime talk shows. Who are the most self-confident, sassy individuals on, on any daytime talk show? Maury Povich, Jerry Spring. Who are they? They're the it's fives. The they're, the, they're the fat and fugly fives. These women completely have their self-esteem down. Telling you that men like thick girls, men like fat girls. <laughs> uh, the, these are the women with high self-esteem. That, that, you that, just that, have it wrong. You just don't get it. I think that you're not seeing what's past that. They're pretending that they have size. I, size darling, size. I, again, I, I, they don't really have size. I size. don't know what they have. I'm just telling you. When I treat hot chicks like crap, they flock to me like bees flock into honey. Are you kidding me? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> By not telling women they're sexy, by not telling them they're beautiful, by having them dress up and then pretending I don't notice, I get whatever I want. And I have found over the years that when I slip and tell a woman she looks hot, I end up paying for it in the end. Uh. And Are you talking about in a relationship or on a date? Doesn't matter. On a first date? Does or on a relationship? Well, again. It does, I'm talking about getting late. Okay, so on a first date then, because you're not going to go past the first date if you don't think you're going to get late. First of all, I so try to avoid what you call date. a date. I try to avoid that. I avoid dinner. I avoid movies. I avoid concerts. My whole idea of a date is let's get a drink. That's it. I tell women I will hook up with them after dinner. Let okay. Poindexter... From the accounting department, let him take them to dinner and pay for it. But I don't do that. You think I want to sit with some chick for three hours in a restaurant, watching her order the most expensive things on the menu? No. Have you ever dated somebody that's not after your money? It's not a matter of being after my money. It, it has nothing to do with that. Because it's at every level. It's like the chicks who go with you to Red Lobster. And they order two lobsters. I mean, I, it doesn't matter how much money you make. I mean, I think that there's, I, I just think there's so many women out there that are, I mean, they're probably also in it for the sex or just because, I don't know, they like you. I mean, for really, for who you are, because they have a good time with you. And not because I don't care what the reason is. I don't even care what the reason is. I just know that I've had a lot more success treating women like crap. And by the way, the proof is in the pudding because every woman you talk to, as a man, every woman you talk to, she spends half her time telling you, my ex-boyfriend was a jerk, my ex-husband was a jerk, I, I dated a creep, then there was this real creep, then there was this super creep, then there was this abusive creep. And, and, and then you say to yourself, well... <laughs> you know, these are the guys who get dates with chicks. Well, Tom, I'm actually going to let you go. I absolutely love talking to you. Yes, I know, but you've run out of good points to make. I understand. <laughs> I mean, it's really true. Go out with any woman, and she will sit there, and at some point, she's going to tell you about some jerk she used to date. Oh, that idiot ex-husband of mine. Oh, that jerk ex-boyfriend. Oh, that guy I dated who pummeled me. They will tell you about all the jerks they've dated. What's the message these women are sending? That if you treat a woman like crap, you will get to sleep with her. That's the message they have sent. It is a cumulative message that I have absorbed over the years of dating chicks.
You don't ever hear women on a date say, Mom, my ex-boyfriend, he was so much fun to talk to, and he was such a pleasure, and he was such a great guy, ever. Everybody was a jerk. Everybody was a creep. Everybody was an abuser. Everybody was a womanizer. Everybody treated them like crap. And every one of the guys they're talking about, they've had sex with. Every single one of them. The lesson from this to all the nice guys out there who can't figure out why she keeps telling you about all the jerks she used to date. Guys that get the message. Treating her nicely means she will think you're boring and will not sleep with you, with you. Treating her like crap, that's what all the other guys did, and they got into her panties. They got into the sack with her. Take that message and run with it. Treat them like crap, and they will value you. Treat them like gold, and they will treat you like crap. Tom. 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 Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. This is my Sunday theory. It's delicious as soon as you get it. Leave it out in the sun for a few hours and see if you still want to eat it, because that's what happens to a hot chick over time, okay? It becomes a big mess, okay? It gets all over you. It's in your hair. It's a mess. It's on your clothes, and you don't know what to do about it anymore. You know, just throw everything away. Just don't do it. Just break If you have a girlfriend that you feel like you love her so much, dump her. Dump her today. It's the Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. It's Likas 101. I am your professor. At 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Brandy on Likas 101. Hello. Hey. Hey. I have a question. Yeah. I mean, you're you're totally sitting here dogging us women, but yet here you go with your big loud mouth talking about oh you want to take these women out to a nice expensive restaurant and you're talking about Red Lobster. Actually, I don't think uh, I wouldn't want to take a woman to Red Lobster or any restaurant. But that's what you then, then you're totally contradicting yourself. No, again, you were not listening to what I said. The way, well, you, 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 I'm I'm going to put you on hold because you're just going to keep flapping your gums and. Uh, uh, the fact is, I was not recommending Red Lobster. The caller said, uh, it's all about your money, and people want your money. Do you ever date women who don't want your money? And I said, it's even true at the Red Lobster. That's all I said. I did not recommend the Red Lobster. And had you been listening to what I said, you would know this. I'll play back for you, if you'd like. What? I can do a playback for you, if you'd like. That's enough. 1-800-5800-TOM. By the way, there's an example of what I don't want to have to listen to. Why get married, folks? That's what they sound like. David on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How you doing? Doing okay. Tom, I'm getting pressure from my son's mother to get married. I care why do you, Why do you have a son? Because that's what happens when you uh, do the dirty. It happens once in a while. Well, no, but you didn't use any uh, condoms or anything. And why didn't you? Uh, let's say I was young. And uh, careless. Right? How young were you? Uh, 20, how, 21? So you're 23 now. What's what's yeah. the difference? Uh, well, I've grown up quite a bit, uh, making some more money, bought a home, a little bit more responsible, not doing drugs anymore. Oh, Jesus. But anyway, I, I care. I love my son to death. He's a great thing that's ever happened to me. She's a great mother. I care about her, but I do not. I just get this thing in my stomach when she says we're going to get married. I thought it was the right thing to do when I got her pregnant to ask her to marry her. We've been, we've, we've been engaged. She's been my fiance since then. And uh, I just, I want my son to grow up in a, in a healthy environment. Do you live with her? Yeah, of course. Why'd you, what do you mean, of course? Well, I have a son. That doesn't mean you have to live at her place. No, she lives uh, at, she, we live together. We moved out. Uh, you don't have to live together. You could share custody. Yeah, but that's not the environment I want my son to live in. What environment is that? You know what? Most kids these days live in that environment. Well, I don't want my son to be most kids. 
Yeah, well, guess what? You were a drug addict who didn't use a condom, who knocked up some chick, and you're only marrying her because you were a drug addict who knocked up some chick. Uh, yeah, with, uh, let's be realistic about what kind of environment this kid is growing up in. Okay, tell me, Tom. You're a drug addict, and you knock some chick up. And you're not marrying this woman out of love or caring. You're marrying her because you knocked her up, sure, because when you were on drugs, you were not using a condom. There's no, okay. there's no love story here. So because I was like that when I got a pregnant, I'm still the drug addict mentality and giving my son up in that environment? Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm just, all I'm saying is, uh, you know what they say in the 12-step programs, once an addict, always an addict. I agree with you 100%. So you're a drug addict. Of course, I always, but I don't use. You're still a drug addict. Of course, I think once you're a drug addict, you're always a drug addict. What kind of drug were you addicted to? Oh, I was... Uh, narcotics, marijuana. I was I was in a bad place, but I mean the fact is, what actually turned me around was realizing I was having a kid. I stopped doing drugs. I started making more money. I bought a home. I'm supplying for my family. But the thing is, is I don't want to have to spend money on a freaking wedding. So just and say no. I I I've been. Re I just don't want to cause an argument. I don't want to be in a bad environment. For so, life. so she, you're you're pussy whipped and and scared to death like a little boy. Yes, you're right. Hmm? So, what is your question? My question is: Is do you think it's worth staying to give my son a healthy environment? Well, first of all, I don't think staying necessarily guarantees a healthy environment. Why is that? Because this marriage is 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 totally based on the fact that you did something stupid. It's not based on love or caring. It's based on the fact that you did something stupid. So you think I should dwell on the fact that I did something stupid and not care for my son? I didn't say don't care for your son. I said you don't have to live with this woman and you don't have to marry her. And you don't. Tom, did you grow up in a family where you had a mother and father in your home? I did, but my father was not a drug addict, and my dad used condoms and only had babies at the time that he thought it was appropriate to have a baby. Okay. Not like you. Do you think you might have turned out different if you had to go from your mother's house to your father's Actually, house? my father was abusive. You know what? I might have been better off. Well, I'm not abusive. I don't know what you are except a drug addict and somebody who clearly... Hey, if you told me I'm a drug addict like five million times, I know that. But, but that's what you are. Okay. I all right. You, I I agree with you. But the thing is, is I don't live a drug addict lifestyle. I make a good living, and I have a son, and I want. What do you do for a living? I'm in. I sell insurance. And how much does that pay? It depends on how much you sell. Last year, I grossed 128 thousand. Mm, pretty good. It's okay. I mean, that's why I had to move out of California, so I moved out here to Nevada. It's a lot better. But anyway, I I, I don't know what, what to do, man. I care about her. She's a great mother. To my no, she's, no, she's hell on wheels because you're afraid of her. You are afraid of her. You just admitted it. What do you mean I'm afraid of her? Tell, you're afraid to tell her you don't want to get married. I don't want to You're afraid her. she'll fight with you. You're afraid you're going to have to argue, which means you fight with her all the time about stuff. That's why you know she'll fight with you. Oh, uh, we bump heads because she wants the, the pants and some things I... Mm, you there know, you go. I'm, That's what I'm talking about. This For me, I have no tolerance for that stuff. You fight with me, you're out. Oh, my way, or my, it's my way, or the freaking highway. You're laughing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what it is. It's my way or the highway. Ask the women I've kicked out. So you're saying I should uh, leave her? I'm saying you could live nearby. You can provide for your kid. 
You can take care of your kid. You can have a joint custody arrangement where you split the time. That way she'll have time to go to work or she'll have time to have a social life with her friends or whatever. And so will you. You will be there. And it will be like nowadays the majority of kids who have parenting situations like that. All right? Coward. Typical. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Rob, on the Tom Likas show with your professor. Hello. Hey, Dad. How's it going? Going okay, son. Okay. Well, first of all, I love your show. I listen to it every day, and I fall asleep to you in my ears every night. And um, I just have one question: Is I'm nineteen. I can't go to very, like bars or anything, and I don't really know where to go to get chicks or anything like that. Well, we've discussed this, and, uh, uh, you know, there are two different places you can go. Mm -hmm. uh, one is lobby bars and hotels, uh -huh. because you don't need ID to get into the lobby of a hotel. Okay. Right? Yeah. And uh, restaurants that have bars, mm -hmm. places with names like TGI Fridays, okay. El Torito. Macaroni Grill, Bennigan's, Hooligans, Chili's. Okay, okay. There's a million places you can get into without having ID. Okay, cool. Um, and I have one more question. You um, can't drink illegally, but that doesn't mean you can't go in. Yeah, that's true. Um, I have one more question about, like, me being in college. Or I go to Orange Coast College, and... um. Uh, I don't really know how to, like, you know, be, like, a jerk or anything like that to girls, like, just while I'm at school or anything like that. Like, I don't I don't know how to use that method while I'm there. Well, do you know how to be a jerk? Sometimes. Uh, well, listen, whatever your instincts tell you to do, do the exact opposite. Okay. Whatever. If your instinct says to say, oh, you look nice today, don't do it. All right. If your instinct is to say, you know what, there's a really expensive restaurant I've been saving up to take you to, don't say that. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Dad. Can you take me out of Bob Vicka or Bill Vicka style? Do Who? You have that? Who? Uh, the Fox News Channel style. Oh, Bill Vicka style. Yeah. I hadn't even thought about that. Here you go. Fox News Radio, I'm Bill Vitka. I'm Bill Vitka, and uh, just a second, I apologize for this, but I'm just a little, uh, I, I really apologize for this, as a matter of fact. There actually is a, a newscast here, uh, but... Uh, <laughs> oh, my. He's never going to live that down. Poor Bill Vitka. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. William, on like us one oh one with your professor. Hello. Hey, how are you today, sir? I'm doing great, William. Uh, I want to make a comment about the uh, when it's appropriate to give a uh, woman a compliment. Mm -hmm. It's only appropriate to give her a compliment if you could give the same compliment to a man. Like, wow, that's the fastest I've ever seen anybody change a tire or something. Like that. <laughs> You know, it, it has to be a generic situation. If you give them, wow, you look great today. Oh, that, that, what they heard is, hey, he's buying me a wedding ring. <laughs> <laughs> also, I was wanting to uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to, uh, and I know you're extremely busy, to uh, call uh, Russ Martin. Yes. Uh, I live in uh, the Fort Worth area, and uh, I mean, that was great. Uh, and he is thinking twice, and then uh, he told us that uh, you had emailed him that you wanted to talk to him privately. Oh, I'm air. not done. I'm, I, if I am coming to town, I, that wedding will not stand. Oh, I know that's right. And they were giving him a hard time the other day about uh, had he uh, talked to prenuptial and uh, he said, yeah, that she's saying she didn't want anything, and all the guys said, oh, she's setting you up. They always say that, for God's sake. The Tom Likas Show.